used to be a disc jockey. Good morning to you, 747. I'm Sammy Stevens. The weather forecast, partly cloudy mild today. High today, 85, low tonight, 75. Current on the outside is 72 degrees on your radio. During the pandemic, I created a video that asked the question, what happened to flea market Montgomery? It contained this uh, stellar piece of visual editing. The answer to the question was pretty simple. The place ceased to exist in 2011 when Sammy Stevens, star of the viral mini mall rap, closed the place down. But what of Sammy himself? Depending on where you look, you'll read that Stevens became a recluse, started a career as a preacher, or even passed away a few years ago. None of this is true. I recently met with Sammy through work, and even though I didn't have the right equipment and one of my only shooting locations was my hotel room, I couldn't pass up the opportunity to delve a little deeper into his story, talk about the past, and let people know what he's up to today. See, I own the flea market. Me. Me and Jesus, nobody else, okay? So I put it together. When I went there, I had three 10 by 10 boots, and it was, and it was called um, Flea Market of America. And when I took over a year and a half later, I changed the name to Flea Market Montgomery. And it was just a blessing to me, and I set the stage for everybody, and I promoted it, and the minimal rap came about. Uh, there was a guy named Terrence came to the store one day. He said, I have this commercial I want you to hear. And he was trying to, you know, pro promote a commercial for the flea market. And it said, flea market, Montgomery, is just like, it's just like. I said, man, I don't want that. And so he asked me to come over to his house. And he worked with Ruben Stutters, who was with uh, one of the American Idols winners. And uh, I went over to his house that night, and he had the um, tracks laid down. And he told me to put the headphones on. And uh, I had never been in no studio. And so what happened, he had to be, and I said, flea market. Montgomery, it's just like, it's just like a minute mall. He said, I like that. He said, let's stack it. I said, stack it? He said, yeah, we want to stack it with, uh, with, with you know, put, put layers of voices on top. And he wanted me to repeat it. So I did. Flea Market, Montgomery, it's just like, it's just like a minute mall. He put it together. Said, oh, man, that's good. I said, hold on, hold on. I said, I like this. I'm not through. I said, let's do Flea Market. Montgomery, it's just like, it's just like a minute more. So if you listen to all those voices on that uh, uh, video, all my voices, is five of them. We get onto the state of retail today, and I ask whether Sammy would ever consider opening another flea market. Although he's been approached to do so, he doesn't see it in his future right now, telling me that he sees a lot of parallels between the post-COVID landscape and how things were when he closed flea market Montgomery. But what happened with the flea market in 08, we was in a recession. That's when uh, George Bush was going out and Obama was coming in. General Motors went bankrupt. Chrysler went bankrupt. Circuit City went out. And a lot of people, uh, people lost their homes and everything. And at the flea market, I was selling new furniture. So people wasn't, you know, uh, buying houses. And, they, and so that took me down, okay? It, 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 was just, it was hard to get up. I'd never been exposed to a recession. So it, it was one of those journeys. So what I started doing to try to recuperate was going out doing commercials for, for other businesses like I was in Oklahoma, Missouri, and Kansas with Rico Car Sales and Credit. Uh, I was doing commercial in uh, Aberdeen, Mississippi for approved auto sales. And uh, I did uh, over in Georgia, uh, Dealer's Choice Auto Auction. People was having me to do that commercial. And I did a um, commercial with, um, I think, Regal Theater. It was a Sprint commercial. And um, that was my limelight. I, when I do a commercial, it's, they, they drop. I mean, people love me because they like my style. They know it's real when I come off of it, you know. So it's been great. I mean, I love it. I mean, and people are still calling and searching for me. But I'm going to say this here. See, my son has that Instagram set up. He gets all the info, see. He, he screened it out how he wants to screen it. But I love it to death though. You know, that's just part of, you know, being, you know, young. Sammy left his hometown of Montgomery more than a decade ago 
and I'm curious to find out how he ended up in Jackson, Tennessee. I love Montgomery. I was born and raised in Montgomery. And um, I moved, I went through some things with uh, a divorce. And I wanted to get out of Montgomery for a little while. And uh, I went to LaGrange, Georgia. A friend of mine called me over there working for uh, Nissan of LaGrange. And some of the managers moved to Jackson and some of them called me to come here. And I said, why not just get away for a little while? So I moved here to uh, Jackson, Tennessee with car lock Nissan. And I love Jackson. Jackson's a real quiet, nice place. A lot of shopping, some, a lot of restaurants. So I buckled down here for a little while and I feel better. My health is great. Uh, you know, I was kind of being married for a long time, went through some type of depression. And, uh, but now I'm great, I'm better, uh, I'm loving it, and I'm getting ready to come back with my Jesus, he's just like my Alpha Omega. I came to praise him, that's coming. All these years later, Sammy still calls Jackson home. Despite only intending to bunker down for a little while, he's become a permanent fixture here. And it's very clear that his faith is important to him, so I ask him if he's active in the church community here and whether there's any truth to those rumours of a pivot to becoming a pastor. I visit a lot of churches here in Jackson, but I'm keeping a low profile because I want to work on me. Sometimes, you know, you have to work on yourself. I've been working since I was nine years old, and uh, and this is like a vacation for me. I, um, I'm i free. Uh, I'm, I'm in good health. Um, I'm, I'm just happy to be here for a while. And uh, so, you know, it is what it is. Sammy waxes lyrical about the city of Jackson, a couple of hours outside of Nashville, so convincingly that it makes me want to move there. I find out later that Jackson has previously been called one of the most dangerous small cities in the state. But that's what Sammy does. He looks for the positive in things. Case in point, his intentions to re-enter the limelight in the months to come. But I'm coming back out there, but I just want to take a vacation. You know, like I have a long vacation. And so hopefully uh, this is 2022. I have plan on getting back in 2022. And it's happening right now, man. A lot of things are happening with me right now. Some things I had to cut short because I'm not ready to make that move yet. Uh, I had some people reaching out to me about writing a book. Um, I've had a lot of things that was offered to me, but I just want to, I need a little peace in life. And now I have peace and I'm good now. Sammy and I get talking about somewhere he spends some of his free time. Jackson's local shopping centre, the old Hickory Mall. How could we not with this channel being what it is? And I swing by to find that, once I make my way past someone tweaking in the parking lot, it's a textbook struggling mall. Earlier that day, Sammy talked, and sung, about his passion for brick and mortar retail, and revitalising malls like old Hickory and those in and around Montgomery. Even if it does end up turning into a commercial for my YouTube channel halfway through. Something said, Sam, won't you do something special for me? I said, the dead mall. It's walking, it's walking. Oh, yeah. Just come alive, just come alive. Why don't you invest in the malls? Just bring them alive, just bring them alive. And tell all your friends to please watch Dead Mall Walking. Speaking of YouTube, Sammy has had more than his share of issues with the platform. In 2015, he appeared in an article saying he never saw any money from YouTube for the Minimal rap. That's due to the tricky situation of another user uploading the most viewed version of his video. I ask him if he's ever seen any of that revenue come in from YouTube directly. Not from YouTube. I was making my money off of TV commercials for other companies. Talking about monetizing. See, when YouTube came out, nobody knew about YouTube. I'm the grandfather of YouTube. Okay, my stuff was out there. One only, it was like 15 of those uh, flea market uh, videos out there that was downloaded by other people as well as myself. So, you know, and some of them they took down, you know. So um, I gave those videos out to people to watch on their DVDs and some of them, somebody started to download them. That's how I got there. But he still found a way to make money from it. I am a copywriter with BMI and I'm registered with BMI, and they pay me a royalty check because every time it's being played, not just YouTube, it's being played all over the world. 
So I own it. It's nobody on it but me. I paid for it. I own it. I have a, a list of places that that pays me from overseas, and I like that. And uh, every time I go out, I show it to people too. So I collect off of it the royalties. And I tell you, I'm Sammy. I own it. It's just like it's just like finding a way to protect yourself. Oh yeah, that's how I do that. Even so, at a conservative estimate, Sammy missed out on tens of thousands of dollars if he had been able to monetize his video in the traditional way. Not enough to retire on, but a life-changing sum of money nonetheless. These days he's still working at used car lots. I didn't want to dox him with b-roll, so the lots I showed earlier were filmed elsewhere. But I imagine that he does well at the job, if he's able to capitalise on even a fraction of his natural charisma. Sammy continues to hustle, and recently released an NFT of the Minimal rap. He also plans to gift the winning bidder the suit he wore in the video, though a friend of his joked that it should be in the Smithsonian. When I first found out about the NFT, it was last year on ABC News, where somebody paid $10 million for an old YouTube video. So uh, that's when I got all excited about it. Now, my video is unique because uh, I started, you go look back, people weren't doing it, people are mimicking me. They are redoing the minimal rap. See, that's like they do TikTok now, right? But I was ticking talking way before then, okay? So I had a young man out of London to reach out to me about the NFT, okay? And uh, we put a deal together, and he's doing that. But we have a contract, and it's something that he wants to do, and a lot of people try to step in and take over, and I wouldn't do that. I'm a lawyer, and I'm faithful. So if you come into me with your program, to get on your show, well, I'm not going to stab you in your back or cut you out. I'm one guy that believes and loyalty. Loyal as Sammy may be, the NFT hasn't generated any serious interest at the time of this video's release. In early 2021, there was an appetite for NFTs of viral memes, but it appears to have tapered off since then. I'm reminded of Sammy telling me how people used to come to the flea market to take pictures and dance for them, then leave without buying anything. Still, it doesn't seem like he has any regrets about those days, and I get the impression that he'd do it all over again if he had the chance. I created a rap, okay, that people could dance to, sing and enjoy and made people happy. You here right now because you love it. And you're not the only one. There's millions that loves it because it makes them happy. You have to present something that is going to take all the evil out of some people. And that's what I was doing. You know what I'm saying? And I love it. And, 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 and everybody see it, they love it. I mean, it's just, it's there. And it's not going to forever be there. It ain't going nowhere. You go back and look, Cleveland show, right? We had done a contract a year before they even aired the show. You go look to the first one on there as a celebrity, it was me. Now it's all kinds of celebrity. I am the grandfather. If you're lucky enough to spend even a few minutes with him, you'll soon learn that there's no keeping Sammy Stevens down. As I watch him walk into the night, I can literally feel my mood change. Sammy's positive attitude is infectious, and the room gets a little less bright when he leaves it. I want only good things for him, but viral success is hard to replicate, and there's no predicting when all of his big dreams will come true. I'm history. YouTube, they need to put me in a YouTube museum because I'm there. I made it, I created it. I made it happen. I made a lot of people happy. I'll be back. <laughs>